In this video, I'm going to show you how to make sodium vanadate nanobelts as a cathode material for zinc iron batteries. It exhibits good energy density and cycle life when using a combined zinc sulfate and sodium sulfate water-based electrolyte. Making it is relatively straightforward and within reach of many home experimenters. Hi, first of all, an apology that I haven't done a video for quite some time. I have been quite busy with lots of other things. One of those things being giving my lab room a deep clean, which it badly needed. Um, however, the time that I have uh, spent, that I have been able to do some experimenting, uh, there hasn't really been anything that I felt worth doing a video on, other than this uh, thing that I'm going to show you now. Um, I've had some success with combining sodium vanadate with my sugar carbon foam. This is a carbon foam that I've uh, showed you in my previous videos. In my previous videos, I tended to focus on producing different carbons and also on supercapacitor type of devices. Uh, but now I'm focusing my attention more on battery type of uh, devices. My eventual aim is to produce a hybrid uh, type of device that would have both supercapacitor and battery uh, characteristics. Uh, now the main idea behind my videos on this subject is to share my experiences and ideas, but also to cover stuff uh, that others haven't done, like Robert Murray Smith. Uh, if you're not familiar with Rob, please go and take a look at his channel, do a search on YouTube, find his channel, and uh, search for the videos that he's done on this subject. Um, Rob actually has done a little bit on uh, zinc iron batteries. He uh, showed us how to make zinc hexacyanoferrate uh, as a cathode material uh, for zinc iron batteries. Um, in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to make uh, sodium vanadate nanobelts uh, as a cathode material that you would use instead of the zinc hexacyanoferrate. Um, and I thought it was worth showing because it exhibits a really impressive energy density for a low voltage battery. And um, I'll also show you the battery characteristics and performance when I show you the battery curve later in testing. Um, now I made this a sodium vanadate compound from referencing a scientific paper. Um, I've given the link to this paper in the description below for you to go and take a look at. Um, there's actually been, um, there's been a lot of research papers done in uh, recent years on aqueous electrolyte zinc ion batteries. Uh, zinc is a popular choice uh, because of its performance and um, its zinc to ions, but also because of its low cost, um, its easy availability, at safety and low, low environmental impact. Um, of course, there are other papers uh, looking at many other metal ion batteries as well, like potassium ion and um, calcium ion. Aqueous electrolyte zinc ion battery research does tend to focus on the cathode material and mainly on um, things such as hexacyanoferrates, like zinc, manganese and copper. So if you wanted to make manganese hexacyanoferrate, um, I would guess that you would think, uh, swap the zinc sulfate for um, manganese sulfate. Uh, also things such as manganese dioxide and um, quite a lot with vanadium based compounds. Um, now vanadium was actually a chemical I never heard of before um, Rob introduced us to it um, with his battery making kit. Um, you might guess uh, that it's a rare earth metal like lithium, but you'll be wrong. Um, there's actually more of it on the earth's crust than uh, zinc or copper. It's also relatively cheap, safe and available to buy at places like eBay as vanadium pentoxide. And you will need vanadium pentoxide to make uh, this compound. Uh, you can also purchase it from Rob's online shop. So you can go to Robert Murray Smith's channel. I think there's a link to his shop on many of his videos now. Um, and as I say, you'll need to get some vanadium pentoxide uh, to do this compound. So now I'm gonna show you how I made it. To make this, you will need a stirrer. If you don't have a stirrer, you can make one like the one I've made here. You can buy stirrers, I think quite cheaply as just stirrers, 
or the more expensive heater stirrers that start from about £70. You don't actually need to heat this one, the paper says 30 degrees, but I don't think it's a super critical thing as I've had the reaction happen at room temperature. Once you have your vanadium pentoxide as your vanadate source, the only other thing is good old sodium chloride, table salt, as your sodium source. You measure out 6 grams of salt and stir it in 50 millilitres of deionized water. Once the salt has completely dissolved in the water, you then gradually sprinkle in 3 grams of vanadium pentoxide. Be careful with this stuff, you may want to wear a mask when doing this. You don't want to breathe in small particles of vanadium pentoxide dust. So even though it's relatively safe to use in a water-based zinc iron battery, it's not safe to ingest vanadium pentoxide. Uh, it is toxic and you don't want to get a lot of it on your lungs. So be careful when handling it as a dry powder. Now leave this to stir for up to four days. Now I've had the reaction complete in between about one and a half, two days. You just need to keep an eye on it and wait for it to change color from this brown yellowy color to a yellowy orange and then to a dark reddy orange. After about 12 hours or so, you can see that this has changed to an orange color and it's starting to get very gloopy. At this stage, you need to put it into a larger beaker and add more deionized water. As the reaction continues and thickens up, add more water so that it's able to keep stirring and until it goes what the paper describes as black red, which is the dark reddy orange color. I managed to get this stirring up to half a litre of water when I was confident the reaction was complete and hasn't changed from this colour for a while. You then need to filter it. Ideally you would have a vacuum filter. Me and Rob have showed you how to make these vacuum filters or you can buy one. You can just filter it with filter paper but it will take much longer. Add more deionized water to clean your sodium vanadate nano belts. At this stage, the paper says to dry it, but I chose to clean it with more deionized water into a beaker and back on to stir, because at this stage I preferred to add my carbon to it now. Now I know this produces about three and a half, four grams of sodium vanadate, so I added about two grams of my sugar carbon foam as my conductive additive and also as an added active material. You can use any conductive activated carbon. Once I've shaken it all in and stirring for up to an hour, I filtered it again. When drying, the paper says to freeze dry. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of a freeze dryer. They generally cost northwards of a grand. Now I've still been able to get a good performance by drying this overnight in my oven at the very lowest setting, no more than about 50 or 60 degrees. You can leave it to dry for a few days on a radiator instead. It's critical not to aggressively heat dry this. This compound is a hydrate. If you heat this over 70 or 80 degrees, you could damage the hydrated structure of the compound it's important for working so well in this battery. Once it's fully dried, you can grind it into a powder. I just used a pestle and mortar. Or you can use a coffee blade grinder. Now I need to turn this into an ink to put on my graphoil current collector. If you don't have graphoil, uh, you could use stainless steel. I put 0.2 of a gram of the powder into a pestle and mortar along with 10 millilitres of deionized water and 5 to 10% by weight of binder. You can use PVA, but I made up some CMC SBR, which is a binder Rob has done a video on. So we give this a good wet grind to turn it into our ink. Then I pipette one millilitre of the ink onto the graphoil. I now know that there's about 20 milligrams of active material on the current collector. Knowing this is important to calculate the energy density. Once it's dry, it's ready to test. Now I find that filter paper works best as a separator for water-based electrolytes. 
I soaked this in a 50-50 mix of one molar zinc sulfate and one molar sodium sulfate. Place it over the cathode and place the anode on top, the anode being the zinc metal. And then I used a couple of clips to hold it all together. I connect the cathode graphoil with the sodium vanadate nanobelts hydrate plus the carbon additive to the positive and just a strip of zinc metal as the anode, which in this type of battery is connected to the negative. You see on the voltmeter it reads over 1.5 volts. Firstly, you discharge this cell. You do not need to charge it the first time. I then discharge the cell with a 10 milliamp load down to 0.2 of a volt, after which you can recharge discharge cycle it from between 1.25 volts to 0.3 of a volt. As you can see by the discharge curve, the cell gives most of its energy between 1 and 0.6 of a volt, with an impressive 4 milliwatt hours. That's 200 watt hours per kilogram. That's a pretty good ballpark figure for a low voltage battery, even for just the weight of active material of the cathode. This is the best I've managed so far uh, for a zinc iron battery for energy density. Now I have also tried adding just a conductive additive, i.e. graphite, to the sodium vanadate without my sugar carbon foam, and it doesn't perform as well. So I believe adding an activated carbon like this can give better results for zinc iron batteries. Also, I think I've read somewhere uh, that this has been proven. Now I know many of you might not want to actually repeat this particular experiment, or maybe you're just watching this um, as, as a matter of interest. Um, hopefully it's given you a few ideas and areas to do your own uh, research. Go on to Google Scholar and look up uh, different metal iron batteries like zinc iron with uh, different vanadates, zinc, ammonium and calcium. Calcium vanadate is, I heard, is pretty good. Um, I do find, and you might find this as well, that um, scientific papers can be quite difficult to read and do contain quite a lot of jargon that makes it hard to follow. Um, but you can pick up some really useful information from them. Uh, I know I have, and um, often I, I also look at the method and the experimental section in these papers to find out um, how they made it, or uh, at least give me some clues on how they uh, made something. And um, they're well worth uh, looking at. Some are behind paywalls, but some are free as well. Uh, so that's it really. hope this helps and you hope you found it interesting. Uh, I read every comment to my videos and will reply unless it's a question I don't know the answer to. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching.